one of the OGs to ever do it. Chinese history has been one characterized by constant ups and downs. Throughout time though, China has managed to stay strong. It's hard to truly quantify everything China contributed to the world, a list which includes many inventions as well as many concepts, religions, and philosophies which help to enrich civilization. Today, China is one of the powerhouses of the world, but they are not without their own faults and share of issues. Chinese society as we know it was started around 2100 BCE with the Xia Dynasty. This dynasty is thought to have lasted for a millennia before being succeeded by the Shang Dynasty, who was subsequently conquered by the Zhou. The Zhou rule, however, was fragmented by warlords who didn't really pay any mind to what the kings wanted, thus leading China to break up into seven states, each fighting for dominance during what became known as the Warring States period. Eventually, the state of Qing reunited China and established an autocracy with Qing Shuhuang, then known as Ying Zhen, proclaiming himself as the first emperor of China. If you want to learn more about Qing Shuhuang and his life, check out my companion video to this one. It was during Qing Shuhuang's rule that the Great Wall of China started being constructed. Parts of the wall were originally started during the Warring States period, made by each state to defend their own borders. However, in order to impose centralized rule and prevent an uprising by feudal lords, Qing ordered sections of these walls to be destroyed, while also having the remaining walls at China's northern border be connected. This was intended to be a defense against the Xiongnu people, who are thought to be the predecessors to the Huns, Mongolians, Turks, and other cultures. In Civ 6, China's builders can create the unique improvement, Great Wall. This can only be built on your border and cannot be built on top of resources. The wall gives occupying units a plus 4 defense strength and automatically gains 2 turns of fortification for a plus 6 defense strength. This makes sense as the Great Wall was built for defense and its stats make it the same as a fort. However, the wall is available earlier, although with some restrictions to the placement. In Gathering Storm, the wall was buffed to grant plus 2 gold as well as an additional plus 2 gold for each adjacent Great Wall. Historically, I'm not sure if this gold bonus really makes any sense, other than perhaps how it is now a place of tourism and thus can generate revenue for China. The walls also grant plus 2 culture once castles are researched, which makes sense as the Great Wall is one of China's cultural sites and the wall generates a lot of tourism to this day. The Great Wall continued to be worked on throughout Chinese history, spanning across many different dynasties. The Great Wall we visit today though is not the same as the one which Qing Shu Huang established during his time. Not long after the Emperor's death, rebellions began across China and soon a new dynasty, the Han, established itself as the unifier of China at around 200 BCE. The Han Dynasty is characterized as a golden age of China as it expanded its territory boosted its economy, and allowed for much scientific and cultural development. The Han Dynasty was so influential that many people in China still consider themselves Han Chinese. This golden age, however, would not last, as eventually the Han Dynasty was ended by a series of rebellions, including the Yellow Turban Rebellion. Following the revolts, the famous and often romanticized period of the Three Kingdoms began. The story is still one of the most famous in the world today, even leading to the Dynasty Warriors video game. What then follows in Chinese history is a constant cycle where a warlord manages to reunite China under their dynasty name, only for rebellions to split the country again after the dynasty weakens for whatever reason. This then results in a new dynasty eventually taking over. This is what became known as the Dynastic Cycle which is actually China's civilization ability. An important factor to consider in this cycle is a concept called the Mandate of Heaven. This was used as early as the Zhou Dynasty as a ways of justifying the change in rulers. The Mandate of Heaven basically posited that Heaven bestows their blessing on a dynasty if their rule is worthy. But then, if natural disasters such as famine or flood occurred, it was a sign that Heaven was displeased with the ruler if the ruler is then overthrown by rebellion, 
It meant that the ruler was considered unworthy and had lost the mandate of heaven to the new dynasty. This core belief in China's political system would contribute to the dynastic cycle. In Civ 6, the dynastic cycle ability makes it so Eurekas and inspirations discovered by China grant an additional 10% of the science and cultural cost of researching the technology or civic. Why the 10% boost? Honestly, I'm not sure if it makes much sense historically, as it seems to me that during times of revolution and dynastic change, there would likely not be much scientific and cultural advancement as a direct result of the dynastic cycle itself. I suppose that maybe each dynasty does bring a unique style of rule, which in turn results in different developments during the dynasty. This bonus could also just be referring to China's long and influential history in general. This includes scientific advancements such as paper, the bell, gunpowder, the compass, and pasta, among other things. Culturally, China also has a rich history of famous literature, composers, art, and is also thought to have been one of the earliest civilizations to introduce many concepts such as slavery, monogamy, espionage, propaganda, and more. To avoid making this video too long, I'll go through the remaining dynasties in history quickly. The Jin Dynasty rose out of the Three Kingdoms, but soon China broke up again into 16 kingdoms. This was followed by the Sui Dynasty, who were then followed by the Tang Dynasty, which is considered another golden age of China. It was around the time of the Tang when the Chinese made the discovery of gunpowder. At first, the powder was used primarily just for fireworks, but they soon found that it was useful for warfare as well. This led to the development of guns and cannons, with some of the earliest use of gunpowder being through the Crouching Tiger, China's unique unit. If you've watched the Disney animated film Mulan, you're probably already familiar with the unit. The Crouching Tiger is described to be a rather crude device, an iron tube sealed at one end and wrapped with ropes to be held together. It had two legs to elevate the tube, so that the missile doesn't engage in any friendly fire. The Crouching Tiger was used at least during the Ming Dynasty in 1368 and even saw action as late as 1592. In Civilization VI, the Crouching Tiger is unlocked with the crossbowman at machinery, which doesn't make much sense as it clearly should be discovered with gunpowder. It has a more powerful ranged attack and the same melee strength when compared to the crossbowman, but the major difference is the attack range itself, where the crossbowman has two attack range while the Crouching Tiger only has one. This is a bit strange considering that the Crouching Tiger used gunpowder and was thought to have a range of about 800 paces, which would outrange just about any other weapon at the time. I guess the design choice was made to make it different from the crossbowman, and not just a better version of the crossbowman. Due to this one range, I think the Crouching Tiger is not a particularly useful unit. It can be powerful for defense, especially when paired with a Great Wall or when garrisoned, but otherwise, if on the offensive, I think crossbowmen and some melee units are probably a better bet. Following the Tang Dynasty were the Song Dynasty, the Liao Dynasty, the Jin Dynasty again, the Western Xia Dynasty, and then the Yuan Dynasty who were established by Kublai Khan and the Mongols after they managed to get past the Great Wall and establish perhaps the largest empire in human history. Following the fall of the Mongol Empire, the Ming Dynasty took over and brought about another golden age. However, this could not last and in 1640, peasants rebelled, ushering in the Qing or Manchu Dynasty. This is when things started to change heavily for China. Europeans began to arrive in China, mainly to trade, but they often manipulated the Chinese government and began to imperialize China, bringing along the drug opium, which rocked the Chinese people. China began to be taken apart by outside powers, as well as internal disorder. Eventually, in 1912, the dynastic cycle finally ended as the Manchu child emperor, Pu Yi, abdicated his throne. Thus began a new age of China. The Kuomintang Party, with the help of the Communist Party and the Soviet Union, managed to defeat the various warlords which sprung up after the fall of the Qing Dynasty. The Kuomintang then turned on the Communist Party, leading to what is known as the Long March. 
The fight between the two parties would continue until they formed an alliance to fight the Japanese during World War II. Eventually, the Communist Party managed to gain control of China, establishing the People's Republic of China, and the Kuomintang fled to the island of Taiwan. Under the Communist Party, China underwent massive change, modernizing and improving education. But this wasn't without its share of disasters, including the Great Leap Forward, the Cultural Revolution, and the Tiananmen Square Massacre. China continued to change over time, and soon China became the premier economic power in the world. However, despite economic prosperity, China has its fair share of problems. China has recently been receiving a lot of backlash with regards to how their authoritarian government acts. This includes how they handle the Uyghur people, how they handle the territories of Tibet, Hong Kong, and Taiwan, how they seem to censor anything which might even hint at something that they don't like. Beyond that, such a large population lends itself to more problems, such as pollution, disease, and an aging population. As their economy begins to slow down, we will see how the modern Communist Party is. Will they dominate the world, or will they just be another name in a long list of dynasties?